Hello guys, how was your day? Did it go as you planned it? Did it not? I mean, did you even plan the day at all? In any case, um, this is what, the fourth patch notes video that I'm doing in a row, so I suppose I better stop slacking and maybe upload a little bit more on YouTube. Um, I guess I'm going to start that uh, tomorrow because today is Wednesday. So today we got another maintenance and another set of patch notes and I figured uh, this week I might as well read them and see what changes we got in Black Desert instead of skipping it again like I did on the previous week. So um, before we get started, I should mention that on the previous week, uh, you guys all know all this already, but anyway, we got the Rabam enhancement skills and this week we got the second one. So basically the first week, the previous week, we got the first skill, the level 56 one, and this week we got the level 57 one, so the second uh, main weapon skill. So, um, yeah, this intro is already too long, so let's just get into the patch notes and see everything that uh, we got. So, as always, uh, let's begin with the events and system tab and work our way down from here. The first event that we got for this week is called the Blooming Blossom event, and this one contains of two different parts. The first one is pretty easy to follow, basically all you have to do is to stay logged in um, for about 5 hours every day and you're going to get one cherry blossom every hour up to 5 uh, per day. So as I said, 5 hours of daily login every day. And you can exchange these cherry blossoms for uh, different types of rewards depending on how many you want to spend. Now, out of all of these rewards, um, I'm not 100% sure which one is the most profitable one, but I'm going to just guess that the 75 one, the fine accessory box, is going to give for most of us the red coral, I mean the, my bad, the crescent ring. So, considering the fact that, uh, you know, the least valuable one is about 40 million or something like that, um, I think I personally am going to go for the 15 one, unless the 25 one is actually the better value. Because uh, just as a first look, the 15 one, basically you can get 5 of those instead of the 75 one, and you get 10 memory fragments and 1 concentrated armor and 1 concentrated weapon stone, which in total they are going to add up to what? 7.5 million memory fragment, another 2.2 for the armor stone, um, maybe 13 million per each 15 cherry blossoms, so in total that should add up to maybe 70 million uh, out of all 5 of them. So I'm going to just guess now that the 15 one is probably the safest way because you're guaranteed to get that much money, but you can just take a look at this chart and figure out which one you want to pick for yourself. Now for the second part of this event, um, this one is again not that complicated, basically you can buy a cherry blossom seed from the loyalty shop and you need to plant this one on a fence and once it grows up you get the cherry blossom pot, which um, is a decoration item that you put in your house. It's pretty nice to have at least if you even check your house every now and then and um, yeah that's about it for this event. Moving on, we have a Cherry Blossom seasonal background has been applied, so that's a nice aesthetic look. The weekend experience has been extended. Um, we, ha we have sent out compensation via in-game mail regarding the network distribution issues. This one actually happened yesterday, so you got a one-day uh, combat experience book and a one-day Kamasiva blessing. Um, the weekend experience boost event will start a day early this week from uh, the 22nd and it's going to last until 26th. Anyway, you, go, you get the point of this, basically the weekend experience event was extended and after that we get into content changes. I should also mention, um, I was actually going to skip this one, but uh, thanks to all your uh, enthusiastic support, the Black Spirit Adventure 2 will be extended one more week. So this is somewhat important because this was supposed to end this week. So we get another week of Black Spirit Adventures 2 and I know that I myself kind of forgot to even play it for a few days. 
So um, definitely, if you you should make a note actually, and uh, you know remember to do this every day, uh, up to ten times a day, I believe. So now let's talk about the content changes. With the most important one being, of course, the Rabam enhancement skill, and I'm talking about the second one. Now, I obviously am not playing all of the classes, so I'm just going to say that um, basically you get the, you already know the point. This allows you to get one extra skill. If you have the two previous skills required to um, somewhat combine them, you can learn an additional skill for your main weapon. And I can say from my experience that a level 56 one for rangers was pretty much useless. I know the wizard one is pretty overpowered and some other classes say the uh, first Rabam skill was very useful, so if you are one of those classes, uh, you know, congratulations, but for me as a ranger, the first, the, the level 56 one was pretty useless. And for this week, uh, rangers got, um, let's say, an interesting skill. One of them has super armor and the problem is that it requires razor wind. Um, as a base skill to even learn this super armor ability, which most people don't ever use. So if you have the additional skill points to max out Razor Wind, then it's going to be an interesting Rabam skill for, um, Rabam skill for Rangers. If not, um, I'm not sure. The other one is a static uh, skill and, um, you know, as a Ranger with no protection, that's very much useless. I'm not going to talk too much about this because um, I'm pretty much sure not many of you play Ranger and out of the other classes I don't know what the skills do, so you better just log into the game yourself and check the skill you know, yourself and see what it can do. I'm just going to say as a final word that for me as a Ranger the Rabam skills are a very big disappointment. Um, I don't know if it's just me, I mean out of all of the rangers, if it's just me or all rangers in general, but for me the Rabam skills seem to be, you know, really useless um, compared to the other bow skills. So now let's move on and talk about the rest of the patch notes before I make this video way too long. The team battle rewards have been increased, so the winning team is going to get 2 million reward now and the losing team is going to get 1 million. I actually never did team battle before, so I'm not sure what was the previous reward, but I'm going to assume they just increased the, um, you know, the reward a little bit. But the interesting thing that I actually quite like in this patch note is that you can now obtain sharps and hearts from gathering with an empty bottle. And this is actually, at least to me, it seems quite interesting because um, I'm one of those players that uh, kind of you know, very rarely gathers at all. So to be able to just buy out of bottles and AFK um, in Heidel and still get sharps and hearts is actually very interesting. It is definitely going to make me, you know, want to invest my energy for, for something at least. And even though it says that uh, um, the automatic gathering is going to stop when you get a sharp or a hard animation. It's still, you know, a semi-AFK gathering process. So I'm going, I'm actually quite interested to see what is the drop rate for the sharps and hards, but if it is at least as good as the gathering one, then I'm going to assume that this is the new, you know, you know the new AFK gathering type of uh, activity. Moving on, we have movement speed and related stats will no longer affect uh, how fast a character will push a cart or wheelbarrow, not sure what this one even means, but there you go. Um, a new wall object has been added at the starting point of the red battlefield, um, the red desert side of red battlefield. This one I actually noticed because by the time the patch notes came up, I actually had time to do two Red Battlefield games and test a new Rabam skill and I did notice the wall. At first I thought it's actually a bug, but no it's not. Um, it's going to be interesting exactly how much use people are going to make out of this wall because, uh, you know, it changed, it changed the terrain, so it might have some, you know, tactical use. Um, besides that, uh, moving on, we have uh, team battle will now uh, end when more than three team members exit the game. I can't really talk too much about this topic because I never did team battle, so let's see what else we have. 
a new title colorful has been added and you can obtain this one by killing enough cuckoo birds so if you want a colorful title there you go the pre-order function has been added to the transaction made using the pre-order function will trigger the cooldown of the transaction made um, I'm pretty sure this just means they added a button to at least, uh, you know, put a, pre uh, put a pre order on an item using your transaction made. So just quality of life improvements. Um, pre order button is now available for out of stock items in the marketplace. I think that was in the previous patch note as well. I might be wrong. So anyway, we have some fixes which I really could care less about. I mean, couldn't care less about. So this next one is actually very useful for people who actually do horse breeding. So Mount's death penalty system will be amended next week. So it's not going to be available from what I understand this maintenance, but starting with the next week, if a horse dies, you know, the death count will no longer affect the horse breeding process and maximum stamina of a mount will no longer decrease with death. So this is actually, you know, very useful for people who actually do horse breeding because now you can kill your horse as much as you want and it shouldn't affect the breeding process at all. However, the death count will continue to show up on the stable UI, you know, just in case you want to see how many times you killed your horse or in my case, how many times I drowned my horse. Um, Due to the changes above, Mount Resurrection Reset item is no longer sold, or at least it will be no longer sold. Actually no, starting with this maintenance, the Mount Resurrection item is no longer going to be sold, but will soon be available in the Pearl Shop Loyalties category. If you have any items to reset the um, death count of your uh, horse in your inventory or storage, um, until March 28th, it will be refunded in Pearl's next week's maintenance. So at least that's good. I know I don't have any, but some people might have. So moving on, let's see what we have. System changes, anything useful? A delete temp button has been added to the upper left corner um, of the settings window. If you still see an adventurer's old character, family or guild name after it was changed with a name change coupon, using the delete temp function should solve this problem. I'm pretty interested if that uh, delete temp button has any other use besides that, like the, um, you know, the reload UI used to at least have some functionality in the past. I know the reload UI command doesn't work anymore, or at least for me it doesn't work anymore. So maybe the delete temp button does the same thing. I'm just guessing. So um, moving on, we get into game world and PC and effects changes finally. Fixed the issue where characters weren't able to move at certain spots in Pilaku Jail and do other fixes, which again, pretty much irrelevant. From NPCs, we have um, pretty much irrelevant, Not I don't really care too much about it, but anyway, uh, we can at least read them. Um, Node Manager of Polyforest uh, has been renamed, as I said, irre irrelevant. Grana Marketplace Director NPC um, name has been changed. Actually, you know what, they just changed some names, irrelevant. Mount's changes fixed the awkward appearance of characters when sitting in a bell something wagon. Irrelevant from class changes, what do we have in class changes? For rangers, we have the damage of the bow skill will now be correctly applied as 150 times 2 while mounted, so I suppose this is just a fix. We have some more fixes. Uh, Mystics actually have quite some changes, so the PvE damage of the skill Hurricane Sweep has been increased. At this point I don't even know why Mystics need buffs. So it seems like it has twice the damage that it had before, at least it's just for PvE. Um, next, HP recover effect of the skill um, Spiral Tornado has been removed, so that's a nerf in a way. The HP recovery of the skill um, Hurricane Sweep has been modified. HP recovery, so from plus 20 per hit, now it recovers 500 upon using the skill. 
So actually this is a form of buff, I suppose. I mean, for PvE, it might not be a buff because you might recover less HP overall, but in terms of PvP, if you use this skill on just simply one target, you're going to instantly get 500 HP instead of only 20, so it seems like a buff to me. Um, anyway, the missing information regarding the status effects um, has been added to the description skill, okay, that's not exactly relevant, but... I mean, do Mystics still need changes? It seems like they got some damage increase for PvE and this uh, this change in HP recovery, which as far as I remember, Mystics already had a very uh, good HP recovery anyway. So I'm just going to leave you guys to talk about that if you want. Item changes, anything worth talking about? From here, the only um, somewhat relevant change is uh, the high quality carrot juice and the special carrot juice will now recover 50% more of its original recovery amount on a horse or on a mount. So um, yeah, if you were using a lot of carrots before, then you're going to get 50% more of, uh, I mean, just from the special ones and the high quality ones. Um, moving on, pearl shop changes, I'm going to skip them because, you know, if you really care about that, just check the pearl shop and everything is going to be highlighted into hot or new. Uh, monster changes, we have Mansion Charm and Mansion Totem will now be able to recover the HP of, max of a maximum of 3 monsters. Um, the Manshaum area isn't exactly that popular, I actually spent about 1 or 2 hours yesterday there. Um, maybe it's somewhat of a buff to the totems, but in any case the mobs are not that tough to kill. So quest and knowledge changes. The first one is just a fix, so I don't really care about it that much, but the second line which says uh, you no longer need to have 350 uh, 351 minimum contribution points to accept the following recurring quests seems interesting, even though I don't have any idea what these quests are because I know I don't have that much CP, um, maybe those repeatable quests are actually worth doing. I'm going to just take a wild guess and say that they all give you contribution point experience as reward, so um, definitely check them out in game if you have the CP required. I mean, it says you no longer need 351 CP, but it doesn't say how much you need. Um, I mean, after the change, how much CP you actually need to pick them up. But if it's just simply, you know, available since one CP, I suppose everyone can pick them up, but anyway, try them out if you want, If I mean, I will try them out if I can find them. So besides that, uh, just some fixes, interface changes, anything relevant? I guess uh, there are some small changes. So now when you give a gift to someone, it's going to also display the cost in pearls, as if anyone cared, it's just a gift. But uh, the somewhat interesting one is the cancel button in the end game window will be, um, I mean, has been replaced with a tray button. Um, the tray function is available is available for quick uh, slot uh, hotkey and minimizes the game display to your computer system tray. So I guess that makes it uh, somewhat easier to minimize your game when you go AFK or something like that. And then there's the recently successful uh, cooking and alchemy windows will no longer hide the inventory. Um, the inventory window when using a cooking utens utensil or alchemy tool. So that's going to be, I mean, it's a quality of life improvement. It, I mean, this, I'm not sure if it's still uh, doing this for processing, but it's actually quite annoying to, you know, your inventory get closed over and over after every single successful cooking or alchemy process. Um, I'm actually quite interested if this still happens for processing because that's the most annoying one. After every single gem or item that you finish melting, your inventory is going to close. So anyway, the storage window will now pop next to the inventory one, again just quality of life improvements. Swaying uh, wind shard has been added in the item drop information of the loopy tree forest, which I guess it's Fadus forest I believe. So that's nice. Um, I'm pretty sure that was, was it one of the 500,000 uh, silver ones, the swaying wind shard? 
If not, then it's not that big of a change. But if it is worth uh, the 500,000 silver, then maybe it's going to boost up the profit a little bit for that area. Because Fadus isn't exactly one of the most profitable areas in the game. And uh, with that we have some fixes which um, I personally don't want to read and uh, the patch notes are over. So if I am to make a recap of this week, we have a lot of small improvements which don't really matter that much. It's nice to know about them, but they are not super, re super relevant. And the big change, which is the second Rabam skill. So I guess that sums up everything. So we got the extended weekend experience event. We got the cherry blossoms, uh, which can exchange for different types of rewards depending on how many you save up and uh, of course the second Rabam skill which for some classes I'm pretty much certain it's going to be useless like I'm not sure if the ranger one is useless this time because I don't have razor wind uh, learned and uh, yeah no point uh, making this video too long so thanks for watching if you made it this far i hope it was somewhat uh, helpful maybe enjoyable in any case uh, if you made it this far i appreciate it and uh, i will see you guys next time with whatever video i come up with so have a good day